Raj is frozen. That's not good. No, yeah. I'm not frozen. Oh. <laughs> it's just <laughs> that's so good bro Raj is frozen no he's just baffled by how stupid you are hello everybody and welcome back to episode 31 of the coconut curry podcast on this episode we are going to discuss the NBA playoffs going to talk about the first round talk about the big storylines resulting from the winners the losers um, and somewhere in between and then we're going to go over some of the first, second round games. If we have time at the end, maybe we'll throw in a little bit of draft stuff. But we might also save that for another day. But before we do all that, if you're new around here, we are three college students at the University of Pittsburgh. I did not change that. Formerly, that yeah. Sad. I just read that too. Yeah. That's that's tough. That's really tough. Uh, if you if you are new around here, and if you are been around here often, um, we are no longer three college students yeah. at the University of Pittsburgh. Very sad. Light of a candle. Light the candle. F's in the chat. Yeah. Um, but we are on all platforms. YouTube, Apple, yes. Spotify. Maybe we'll talk about our future plans in another episode. But that's not for today because there's a lot of sports to cover. Um, if you're new around here, we just chat about sports and hopefully offer a fresh new perspective on things. Please like, comment, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. You'll be seeing a lot of ch- uh, content be published on the channel because I have a lot of time this summer to do what I want to do with the channel. So we'll be doing that. First, housekeeping items. Um, this is our first virtual episode. Since we are now separated, I, I am back home. So we will be doing sad. all of our episodes recorded virtually. Um, it is very sad. Um, we'll miss the in-person banter. Um, you might be wondering, because you see this is episode 31. Wait, Justin, where's episode 30? So episode 30 was recorded two weeks ago. I never uploaded it because I got we all got busy with graduation and stuff. You know, so yeah, I, you were graduating college. <laughs> So that episode is out there somewhere. Um, it's an episode I swore not to raise my voice and I made more horrible takes. But unfortunately, I will be uploading that um, sometime in the future. So st- stay you tuned. You know what? That'll go on the be... Patreon. That'll be the secret episode of the <laughs> Patreon that we're going to be starting up soon. That will definitely be starting that you should definitely give us money for. <laughs> yeah, d- definitely. Um, secret content. Then, so we're, it's called Coconut Curry do... Plus. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're starting our own Exclusive subscription content, service. Oh, we have an OnlyFans too. Oh God, <laughs> no! <laughs> what? Here we go. Um, well, just as guys an only. Don't worry about it, guys. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I mean, um, you gotta split the profits with us. What's going on? That's uh, literally just videos. Yeah, of that our was toes. totally the plan. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so we took off two weeks ago. We recorded. You guys never saw that. And then last week we didn't record. So we have actually a lot to cover. A lot that I've also forgotten about in the sports world. But we're gonna keep pushing forward. Um, starting with reacting to comments, every episode we react to comments. Unfortunately, there are no comments to react to, but I believe Peter wanted to address a comment that we reacted to a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, so a couple weeks ago, uh, some Lakers fan got mad at me in the comments because uh, he thought I was stupid for saying the Lakers weren't going to come back against the Nuggets, and they, in fact, did not. So please suck my d- I was right. <laughs> I'm kidding. That, I was that I, we, it was a very friendly banter. I did appreciate the comment, but yeah, it was uh, full disrespect. He said, I hate Lakers. <laughs> I hate you. He said Lakers in six, which was funny too because it wasn't even close. And no, he said, they yeah, gave him the gentleman sweep. They gave him the gentleman sweep. Yeah, but, but they gave him one pity game. Jamal yeah, Murray hit this two guy said I was going to be crying them. afterwards. But, he you did. Know. He's a yeah. cry Giants fan. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, I'll be I'll be crying when the Giants are bad. Don't worry, but I won't be crying because of my because of my takes. Now let's move on to disgruntled moment of the week. Our favorite oh, segment. Yeah. If you haven't been here for disgruntled moment of the week, this is when we talk about moments in our week, in our life, in the sports world, whatever we feel like that makes someone or ourselves angry or dissatisfied. And I'm going to start off with the Darvin Ham firing because I th- felt like this deserved its own segment. You know, there's many sports shows have ten minutes eight minutes dedicated all to Darvin Ham firing. What I want to, what I'm actually disgruntled about is the media's reaction to the Darvin Ham firing because everybody suddenly has adopted this mindset of guys, we can't just use Darvin Ham as an a scapegoat guys. It wasn't Darvin Ham's fault guys. It was LeBron's fault. It LeBron and AD do don't they deserve some blame guys Rob Palenka put the roster together he didn't make a trade at the deadline the, I don't know if anybody has watched the Lakers this season or wa- started watching from game one of the season last year the Lakers made the Western Conference Finals with the lineup of D'Angelo Russell at the point guard 
Austin Reeves at the shooting guard, Rui Hachimura at the three, or LeBron at the three, whatever you want to say. The other person played power forward. And then number four, at the five position, they played Anthony Davis. That is a lineup that they played the closest sweep in NBA history against the Nuggets, who won the championship, was, and the one they made the Western Conference Finals with. To start the year with all of those guys still on the Lakers roster, Darvin Ham played Torian Prince 32 minutes a game. They got away yeah. with it in the in-season tournament. Then after the in-season tournament with Rui on the bench and playing Torian Prince and Cam Reddish, who's a 10th or 11th guy in the league, they went 3-13. and So we will get into the Lakers a little bit later. But the reason the Lakers had to play the Nuggets in the first round is Darvin Ham's fault completely. <laughs> so to, is, are, is a reason the Nuggets... The reason the Lakers lost to the Nuggets in the playoffs, Darvin Ham's fault? No, because the Lakers aren't better than the Nuggets. But they shouldn't have even had... To, like The Lakers should have been a six seed playing the Timberwolves in the first round. Or they should could have been... Uh, but ma- Maybe this year, but they had. I think they played them last year and won. So, um, if I recall correctly. But even if they didn't, um, like it, it's a different matchup. But the reason they had to play the team that beat them last year was because Darvin Ham did a bad job coaching. He played Cam Reddish way too many minutes. He played Torian Prince way too many. And the idea that he's being used as a scapegoat for the Lakers, like no one's upset that the Lakers didn't beat the Nuggets this year. That's not the problem. The problem is that they were even in that position in the first place. They should have been a four or a five seed. They should have gotten to play the Suns or gotten to play the Pelicans or even the Thunder, but they did. They weren't in that position. And I cannot believe that the media has now taken this idea that like it's this we're scapegoating. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it is just because like I get to a certain extent where it's like, oh well, you know, it can't be all his fault. Like obviously, these star, like some of these star players do hold some responsibility towards this. I understand that, but he's also just not a good coach. So like, there's a reason why these star players weren't giving him like the same level of respect as like these other great coaches because if you're not a good coach and somebody knows you're an idiot and they're really good at what they do they're not going to listen to you i it's driving me insane because like darvin ham just during the regular season didn't make the right adjustments and now people Mm -hmm. like you're saying like it's clear that he didn't have the coaching ability in the regular season to make correct choices on how they wanted to play so i don't understand where like that there are coaches are all the time used as scapegoats. I, there's so many of them that you can make that claim for over time. Um like for example Frank Vogel who got ran out like he was much more of a scapegoat who the Lakers fired 2 years ago or last year. Um, yeah, he was he was doing fine with the two team. Years, yeah, 2 years ago he came off a championship 2 years later gets fired. I felt like he was kind of a scapegoat for a he bad was roster. definitely much more of a scapegoat than yeah than yeah, Darvin yeah. Ham again because like the Lakers barely eked into this playoffs and that was a result of going three and thirteen yeah. after the in season tournament and also in the big oh this is another point in the biggest game of the season it was when they were playing the Warriors and if they win that game they get to hold the sixty they would have like a game and a half or a game up on the seventh seed and they would have assured sh- themselves of not playing in the play in spot, which again, I know in hindsight they would have ended with the Timberwolves and maybe that ends bad. We're not playing that game. We're just saying if they avoid but, the yeah. nuggets in the first round, if they, if they beat the warriors, they might have had a real shot to get the sixth seed in that game. Darvin ham played a lineup that had never played any minutes, the entire series together. They got That's outscored by too. 12 points by the Golden State Warriors in two and a half minutes of game time, and the game was over. That's so insane. that is coaching. That is horrible coaching right there. Yeah. In the playoffs, you get lucky because you have the best player of all time who's an in-game coach probably telling you, Darvin, we're not doing that. Darvin, we're not doing that. <laughs> and that's why you don't look bad in the playoffs. But like when you, when LeBron doesn't do that during the regular season, you look kind of good. So I'm disgruntled because I listen to guys like Colin Coward go on his show in the morning and say, oh, oh guys, I think Darvin... And this is Stephen A. Smith said this. All these guys are like Darvin Ham being used as a scapegoat. No. He made bad decisions all season. It's not about the Nuggets series. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Like, it's it, it's just... I feel like this this narrative came out of literally nowhere. 
like nowhere at any point did anybody think that he was a good coach or that he should stay and then the second he gets fired it's like why is he being fired it's like you just said he he wasn't a good but whatever it's fine he's fired we move on the but Lakers are still going to be bad. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but we still get to see them every single day in the news cycle, right? Yep. Because they're the Lakers. Yep. How does this exactly. affect LeBron's legacy, guys? Exactly. Well, JJ um, Reddick's going to be coaching the Lakers next year, so. You're right. That, that would be hype. That going to go crazy. That would be hype. Um, God, that would be so cool. The, the pod but, to head coach pipeline. <laughs> the pod to, yo, are we going to be head coaches? Yo. Good news, yo. Man. I would, Raj hey, would be an interesting head coach. I feel like Raj would, just, would be a good head coach, uh, no. like the Hornets. I feel like I would, send, he would just like would show up and be like, "You're all are terrible." Yeah, I send my worst player out there to break their star player's like ankle. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like he'd be like, "You're all terrible. We're not winning a game. We're just gonna do funny <laughs> and just see." <laughs> let's what just happens. ruin another team season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like let's just ruin some fan's day <laughs> and just you see, kill you people. You see Anthony Edwards out there balling, run into his kneecap. <laughs> like, you're literally gonna turn basketball into hockey with like goons and stuff. <laughs> like you're just yep. gonna have guys that just learn how to fight and just get ejected. <laughs> I make Sean Payton look like a saint. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh my god. All well, right, so my disgruntled moment of the week is uh I have it listed as Rasheed Rice, um, but it's more about just like young NFL receivers deciding to throw their careers away over absolutely nothing and just being stupid. Um, so most recently, Rasheed Rice, after getting into a severe uh, like accident where he had two leased car or two rented cars that were trying to drag race on a highway, get into like a multiple car collision. Everybody ended up being fine. Thank God. Then just Mind you, today, I, I feel like that. I feel like that issue kind of blew over like decently well. It kind of exited it, the news cycle pretty quick. It did, and as much as the NFL likes to say that you know they they hold their league to the like, the integrity and like all that whatever, it's all about the news. If it's in the news cycle, yep. they're gonna punish you harder. It it all depends on how they see it, because if they because they would rather keep their better players in the league longer than keep them out, whatever. You know what I mean? It's a business. But then, literally today, as we are recording this podcast allegedly we have another thing come out about Rasheed Rice punching a what a camera person or like a journalist or a something like a club yeah. a photographer at a club because I guess the guy was like trying to like basically was like kind of instigating him a little bit and being like oh like yo are you gonna get suspended for and then Rasheed Rice just like knocked him out alleged again this is all legend this could come out this could be completely fake I don't know but dude just stop going out until all this pass is over for the longer down zero dark 30 like just NFL lock yourself in a get arrested challenge like impossible exactly raj nailed it right there it's like guys you are in the nfl also for rasheed rice specifically now this has happened that like obviously there's been a ton of stuff with like younger players getting into the league getting into trouble whatever for rasheed rice specifically you literally just won a super bowl with this team can you calm down for like a half second and you can make history like don't do anything stupid just st- just stay in your lane for a little bit and then once you make your money, you make your bank, you do all the crazy crap that you want to. Well, but just like it's just dumb. And the funny thing know. is, the Chiefs are pretty tolerant because Kadarius Tony has been sitting on their roster for the oh, entire yeah. Super Bowl run they had, and he was apparently like leaking stuff about how he didn't like the team and Andy Reid. Oh and all yeah, that stuff. he's so, so toxic. Rashid yeah, it's just an okay receiver and doesn't blow up on the team. He might get a, thir- a second Super Bowl ring. Yeah, like that's the whole thing. But like, it's just it just drives me nuts seeing like this person succeed so much and like achieve their goals and then just like this close to completely throwing it away, like Henry Ruggs, who literally was doing a very similar thing. Obviously, he was drunk driving, so that obviously steps it up. And somebody died, which was incredible, like horrible, mm-hmm. but. That multiple car collision easily could have gotten somebody killed. Like the multiple car collision is not much better. 
like it's not much, but like none of the cars rolled over. Like there, like it could have been so so much worse. And there was but, meat found in the card, right? I don't know about that. Cops kind of do that all the time, yeah. but <laughs> I'm not. I'm not as worried about that as much as I'm worried about just the car crash in general. And then also him assaulting allegedly assaulting a photographer. Like, dude, stay out of the news cycle. You were almost in the clear. Like, please, we were and, so close. Andy is rich and powerful. Like, he could have just gone to the bar tender or something and just been like, "Hey, I don't know, bouncer. Hey, this guy is harassing me. He needs to go." Yeah, or just like, or or if you're that worried about that, like travel with an entourage, like travel leave the with bar, a, le- like just uh, it just I don't know, it just makes me. You sad probably shouldn't even like, be in a bar. I'm going to be honest. Like at the like I know like at this point like I I just I feel bad for like I don't know it just sucks like I I hate seeing these guys get into these bad situations. It's like I want him to succeed. He seemed like a really cool guy. Like he was like working with, out with Mahomes when he was at SMU. Like it really seems like the organization likes him. But like, dude, you have it right. You have like so many people dream about like becoming an, a star NFL receiver, and you have it. Just don't be an idiot. Like, please. Uh, I guess it, that's just why I'm disgruntled. Does it come down to like player counseling or like? I think there definitely has to be some some version of that, I think, as like, because, you know, like, obviously, I don't want to make a generalized statement, but like, uh, like, there are a decent amount of NFL players who like, this was like their only escape to really succeed in life. And it's like, it's hard whenever you go from not a lot to a ton of money, fame and success in a very, very short amount of time. And not to mention the guy's like 22, 20, yeah. like three years old, something like that. Like, like he's like the same age as us, maybe like a year older. Like it's insane to try to like imagine that somebody could just completely cope and handle all of that stuff. Okay. 100% on their own. He just turned 24. So like he just yeah. turned 24. Like that's insane. Like that's an insane thing to just look at a twenty four year old and be like, yeah, you got to be the most mature person in the world, uh, and all eyes are on you at all times. You can't do anything. Uh, yeah, deal with it. It's like we got to be able to help these guys out. We got to be able to set them up for actual success and not just like on field success kind of thing. But yeah, that's why I'm struggling. Big problem. Yeah. Uh, I've been waiting for this one for a while now. On a lighter note. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This might be darker than everything we've talked about. As many of you may <laughs> know, I am a Sixers fan, and we just got eliminated by the New York Knicks a few days ago. And um, although it's sad to see the Sixers not playing in the playoffs anymore, it is a day Big for bong. all Philadelphia fans to rejoice. Tobias Harris will no longer be a Philadelphia 76er after this season. Ooh. And if he is... I will no longer be a Sixers fan. Oh, God. Tobias many... Harris went out there and put up a Tony Snell number game. I was about to zero say. Zero points yeah. in 30 minutes. Yeah, you, the audience, had the same amount of points as Tobias Harris, <laughs> Tobias. a professional basketball player in a win-or-go-home game. Tobias Harris is overpaid. He's not that good. He's washed. Send him to Guangdong. I hate him. You ruined our season. I hate you. Because what what was the final score of the last game? It was like pull, it wasn't it like up. it was like only a couple points and like if Tobias yeah. Harris made like two shots, they could have like won. Uh, it was one eighteen to one fifteen. Yeah, yep. he makes two shots, they win the game. Yep. I mean, buddy, he only took two shots. <laughs> oh. Hey, if you're gonna only shoot two oh. shots, at least make those shots. Yeah, you know what? At least Tobias Harris didn't get scared. At least he Tobias took Harris more stat shots. line for you guys: twenty nine minutes and twenty seconds played, zero field goals made, two attempted, zero three points made, zero three points attempted, zero free throws made, zero three for the three free throws attempted, four rebounds, three assists, zero points, no blocks, no steals, no turnovers, minus ten on the court. Minus 10 on the court. God damn. <sighs> Tobias, now that you're gone, I can finally say this. No, I've been saying it all season. I don't care. I wish nothing but the worst for you in the NBA. And I hope your career in China. No, screw that. Lithuania. 
I hope your career in Lithuania goes well. I hope you average five, five, and five because that's all you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. You are not good at basketball. Please quit while you're ahead and you're no longer allowed in the city of Philadelphia. That's all. Amazing. I Spoken mean, like a true person from New Jersey. Yep. I yep. Philly <laughs> Rush from Jersey. Here's what here's what I'll say about the Tobias Harris. We we talked about Tobias Harris on one podcast, and I stood up for the guy because I said, "Hey, Why? listen, um, like it's not his fault that he got paid too much money. Like we should be blaming the guy Daryl Morey who paid him too much and broke up the Jimmy true. Butler um, thing. That that is all true. However, <laughs> and I still don't blame him for the seasons and seasons, whatever." You cannot be a guy who averages what he averages in the regular season, which, and again, it's disappointing. But this season, this is taking a little down the line. First of all, Tobias Harris is 6'8. So it's not like he's this little guy who can't get to it. Like, he's 6'8, 226 pounds. He can get to his spot. He's like, been in the league for 12 he, years. He was like blessed with the, like genetics that so many people in this world would like give their heart and soul to have those genetics to be able to play basketball at that size and have the talent and have all this but they're just not big enough yep. and he has that gift so here, here i'll read you off tobias harris stat line from the uh season which granted there's a lot of games without joel Embiid, without tyrese max so they're a little bit inflated but tobias harris this year played 70 games he averaged in the regular season 17 points on 49 percent shooting he averaged a three a game on 35% three-point shooting, 88 from the free throw line. He had six rebounds, three assists, one tur- turnover. When he was on the court for the year, he was a plus 3.2. When you are that guy who can average 17 in the, in the regular season, you can't give me zero in an elimination game no matter what. This is whether we want to have a con- conversation about Tobias Harris's contract for the whole year you can't show up or not show up in a playoff game the way you did because you 17 points is a significant contribution that is just taken away because not not even because you had six points that you guys would have won by by like a decent margin like yes you average 17 (laughs) points it's it's just astronomical how bad he was in the postseason in the two, in this postseason, he played six games. He averaged nine points on forty three percent shooting, thirty three from three, less than a free throw a game. Had seven rebounds. It was a minus one point five on the court. So good lord! Like to go from seventeen to nine, reduce your efficiency by a few percentage points, and also just only average like. 0.7 free throws like you're not even being aggressive and i understand there's not a lot of room for that on the team but damn it like yell at nick nurse and say i need the ball yeah i like i need to get some post touches here i can slow the game down when joel and beads on his last life trugging down the court you say joel stand there i got this back down a smaller defender get to your spot if you don't like the look pass out of it but there was just, just go I, find jalen brunson he's like six foot like, you'll find have, him in the 29 minutes Tobias Harris played in game seven. You could have told me he didn't play at all. And I would have believed you because I didn't actually like, I couldn't even process anything he did on the court because he did nothing. Now Jesus. Tobias much improved defender applause, but you can't be a one-sided player on the court. He's not exceptional enough at defense where I say you can be an offensive zero. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're you're then not it's the plus minus game because then it's like are you stopping the other team then from scoring if you're not scoring personally and he's not doing that yeah he's he's a good defender he's much improved but not like he's not, not uh, great example would be Jaden McDaniels for the uh, Timberwolves he's all, he's also a yeah. pretty good offensive player but he's a hound defensively um, oh, yeah. one of the better defenders in the league and so but he's not that level of defender so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Raj. I'm, Should we I'm just get right advisors. into the Knicks? Like Knicks? No, no, no. Let's, we we got to save it. Okay, a that's slow, a slow build. It's like a, a little build. treat. It's okay. like a little treat at the end. Yeah. Oh, not a little treat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was disgruntled moment of the week for everybody. If you like that, there's a lot more of those on our past episodes. You can go listen to. Um, sometimes yes. we tune into our life stuff, and sometimes it's sports related. And today it was very sports related. But going in, we're gonna go through the first round of the playoffs and discuss kind of what happened. 
Um, a lot of storylines coming out of that. I'm not going to be bringing down that many statistics unless it's to like prove a point. But we're just going to kind of talk about the results, what it means for the teams that lost, what it means for the teams that won. Maybe it was about the teams that lost, but like actually it was kind of a good thing for them. So starting off, we're going to talk about what the most lopsided series that happened, which is the Oklahoma City taking down the Pelicans. They won in a 4-0 sweep. Um, the Pels kept a few games close, but other than that, it wasn't that interesting. I honestly forgot this series was even on past like the first two games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I honestly, I actually thought it was going to be a closer series. Of, uh, one of my underrated uh, failures is I thought the Pelicans would at least keep it to like a six game series, five, six games. Yeah. Just it wasn't on. Um, there's a cl- few close games. I guess they could have gone the other way, but um, Pelicans without Zion were not um, intimidating enough. Yeah. My question, firepower. my question from this is, are we underestimating the one seated thunder? Because I think a lot of people are saying, "Hey, the Mavericks, they're gonna roll. They're gonna run right through no. this this thunder team." And I'm I'm starting to wonder: Do the Thunder have a path out the West? I look. I I love the Mavs. It that I just don't know if they match up super well against the Thunder because who is guarding Chet? On the maps, I don't think anybody it, is. Well, Max DeCleva is probably out. Like, and so he's going to be guarded by like, Daniel Gafford. Shy is going to be getting yeah. Shy is going to be getting plenty of points. I hate to speak his name, but um, Josh Kitty, Mister Mister Josh Kitty. <laughs> you can cut this out, but I was about to say <laughs> Kitty for a second. I almost said it, but um. <laughs> <laughs> I he he will be also a very good contribution um to that line. Like I just don't know how because oh, damn it because the more now that I think about it because the Mavs are a lot more experienced in the playoffs. Like oh god I don't know now I'm getting confused. Damn it I don't know. Come back to me. Yeah I think it's it's funny because I think a lot of people are simplifying it as a series. We're talking about a future here, but I think people are simplifying it as a series of the star players well of course luca and Kyrie are gonna be shay and chat the star power isn't there but yeah that okc roster is deep raj any thoughts about if we're underestimating the thunder i don't know i feel like it's so hard with the west right now because like i think the thunder or the i don't know because Kyrie and the mavs could easily pop off but then again, I I like concerned about the matchup because Chet could also pop off. So I think it's gonna go to like six or seven for sure. I feel like the I feel like the Thunder are like taller on average. I know that's yeah. not like the, I know it's like strange, but like I know it's not like the biggest deal in the world. But I don't know. It's just like I feel like the way they play is just like it's just like bigger, and I don't know mm-hmm. if the and obviously. I'm not saying Chet is like the biggest big man in the world. He's like a toothpick, but like just like that, how they keep the ball kind of up high, though it would like lob it and stuff. I just don't know if they have like a lot of good defense against that. Now, of course it's Luca and Kyrie. If they really want to, they can figure it out and combine for like 80 points with each other playing. So I, I think some people are underestimating the thunder to finally roundabout answer your question, Justin, I personally am not. I still mm-hmm. have. I, I still think they're a really dangerous team. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think, I think the, both teams are still good. I think. I don't know who to. I don't. I know. don't need to make. Don't need to make a prediction yet. Um, no, it's not, not yet, a prediction. Not yet. Yet. Okay. Yeah, but I do think it was impressive how they handled the Pelicans first round. They, they treated themselves like an actual one seed, took care of business, and they got eight days of rest before that. Uh, OKC. We're recording yeah. this on Tuesday, the May seventh. Um, so they get a lot of rest before that game, and that's going to come in clutch for them. But uh, a non-eventful series that much of America did not watch. Yeah. M- moving on to the Mavs taking down the Clippers in what felt like everybody knew the Mavs were going to beat the Clippers, despite the, the rosters being much closer than yeah. that. Everyone just knew Luka. Um, he owns the Clippers. And handled business, um, but actually, Luca didn't have a great series. He really didn't. No. Um, there was, was a roller coaster. Obviously, Mavs take down the Clippers four two. Mm-hmm. Kawhi Leonard in and out of the lineup, just yeah. kind of a it's sense. just J- James Harden masterclass. James Harden disaster class. Uh, 
like really i think it was like we the most non-predictable now. series ever besides luca not being good yeah because mm-hmm. it was like it seemed like it was a lot closer at first but then it just like it, i feel like the clippers just lost all of their momentum because did they did, i think the clippers won game one i think and they did yes then, they just they yeah, destroyed yeah. the Mavericks. and then it was like one. oh like this is like a huge thing but then it's like the Mavs started coming back and it's just like it almost felt inevitable that the Mavs were going to end up winning and then the second that i saw that in the clippers arena they hung they had a poster or an advertisement that was dallas to cancun i was like there is no chance <laughs> that they are winning the series there is no way that doesn't come back to bite them in the ass and it absolutely did and i was like yep i knew it in that moment they lost the second that that pr person said that that was a good idea to put that banner up there they were done they lost the series yep i just i love the way you said it was as it it was inevitable because i felt yeah. very like clippers get game one okay it was a disaster for the Mavericks. So they got hounded defensively. Mavericks kind of come back late. We sat on the podcast that wasn't released. And I said, Hey, but they kind of clicked a little bit at the end. Maybe they catch something. Okay. They yep. get a tight game too. Um, but they're still steel home court figuratively game three, win by 11 game four. You're like, Oh man, it goes back to the Clippers series mm-hmm. clip. And then Mavs blow them out in game five, handle them in game six. Of course, quite not being there is a, thing but we'll talk about this with the Sixers series too Kawhi's never there so at some point matter. you start saying yeah. you start saying oh hey what if Kawhi was there but Kawhi's never there yeah it's like you could only use the oh well he was injured as an excuse for so long when it's like well if he's never going to be healthy then what's the point yeah like mm-hmm. you can be this amazing player but if you can't stay on the court then you lose like that's just how that works yep Luca averages 30 points on 40% shooting from the field. Not great. 24% from three. He obviously had some calf injuries and stuff going on. That series um, wasn't great, but still get the job done to take down the Clippers. I guess, where did the Clippers go from here? If you're, if you're looking at the roster, they're literally a retirement home. They just need to, they need a new, I think you got to, you, get some trade considerations for your old heads and just start rebuilding because unfortunately Kawhi Harden and PG are not taking you anywhere They're don't forget Westbrook he's now. also there oh I forgot he what? shot yeah, that, that's, he shot that's disrespectful. four for 32 over <laughs> like two, over like four games who was letting him shoot take the ball away from him and I love Westbrook that was terrible <laughs> Just, it's a retirement home. They just need to get, just get as many draft picks as they can and just start rebuilding. They do. They just need a new kid. That's why they shouldn't have traded shy, but whatever. They're dumb. I think this is like the, one of the biggest victory laps I can take out of the whole entire playoffs is that I sat here. Not here, actually. But I sat on the <laughs> podcast and I said I didn't understand why the Clippers trade for James Harden. And it makes less sense now. They trade yeah. for him with the intent that they're going to bring in. First of all, we can talk about have a bigger narrative about big threes right now than this, but mm-hmm. they bring in James Harden to be a big three partner with the group. Okay. He's 34. Yeah. His birthday is in August. He's going to be 35 years old going into next season. Paul George is a free agent. You just gave Kwai a ton of money when he hasn't honestly, I don't know if he's been healthy in a po- going into a postseason since he won the championship in 2019. And if he has yeah. been, he hasn't been like him. So, oh, and then don't forget Westbrook's there too. Yeah, yeah, but you got Westbrook. You got it's just a bunch, of, just a bunch of people um, right now that are old and not in, impacting the game. And they traded for another one in James Harden, and now it's like you're looking at the roster. You're like, wow. Where do we go from here? Because you don't actually know where you're going to go from here because you can't move off of Harden, I believe, because of his contract. You can't move off of Kawhi because of his contract. Paul George is a free agent, but he might walk for nothing. Mm-hmm. And then, So it's like, what was the point James, of this? James Harden, everyone agrees, is especially with some of these young players balling out right now, he might not be a top 15 player in the NBA. Kawhi is not a top 10 player in the NBA right now. 
you could say maybe if he's healthy, but he's not giving you a full healthy season. So there's no star power on the Clippers. I think they're need to nuke it, but there's no nuking it because no one wants James. They so they're not gonna Yeah, they can't nuke it. Yeah. Uh, I, no one's gonna trade for Kawhi because he's too injured. So you get to hope you can sign and trade in Paul George. Um and so yeah, I think they're it's they're in disaster land. And I just wanted to point out um James Harden and let me just see if I can pull up his game log from the season series because it's just a classic James Harden game log for the playoffs. <laughs> no, don't worry. Crazy game one performance. Game two falls off. Comes back. Game three goes crazy. Has a decent game. Game four and falls then, off a cliff. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. They update this. Okay. Yep. So May third, Dallas in a game seven. Right. So let's actually go back to game six. In game six, when they lost by thirty, James Harden played thirty three minutes. He had seven points. He was. 2 of 12 and had 4 turnovers when they lost by 30. And then in a do or die with no Kawhi, game 7, James had 6 ooh, just turn on my light. James had 16 points on 30% shooting. He had one turnover. He didn't attempt a single three-point shot. Wait, Harden didn't attempt a single three? Yep. That's diabolical. That's insane. These are like you can't make up some of the performances he's had, which I don't think. And like, he's getting an ungodly amount of money for that. And I want to be very clear: like he's had a good game. Like, I'll give him credit. When the game they won, that was crucial. The game four to make tied series two yeah. two. He had thirty three six and seven on seventy percent shooting. That's nuts. It's an all time performance. Yeah. But you can't. You're not. You can't just follow it up with a seven point performance. The next game on sixteen percent shooting. Yeah, you can't shooting. just follow it up with a stinker. Because at that point, you're just a twenty point per game scorer. On yeah. good efi- and good efficiency, that you're just okay. Well, like if you're you just can't be okay, getting hundreds of millions of dollars for that. <laughs> no. So, just one point that I was most predictable thing I realized that trade wasn't going to work out, and now the Clippers are about to move into Intuit Sports Dome, and they have an old ass team and no future. Well, they're screwed. You know who else is screwed? Yep. The Suns, because they're a bunch <laughs> of bums. <laughs> All right, take your victory lap. Go at it. Yeah, I will. You are a moron. You are an absolute moron. I don't even know why I gave the Suns. I said the Wolves were going to win at six. I should have said they were going to win at two. They were terrible. The Suns were so bad the entire series. They were getting emoted on by Michael Jordan's son, a French dude, and a dude that's friends with a YouTuber. That's pathetic. That's absolutely pathetic. Kevin Durant, shave your head. You need to go bald. That patchy hair isn't even working anymore. Devin Booker, you are the biggest loser ever. People were comparing you to the next Kobe. You couldn't even hold his jock strap. You are an absolute loser. And Bradley Beal, what do you even do? You can't even run cardio at this point. This is terrible. God, that organization's awful. Sorry. Raj. You're a f- idiot, bro. <laughs> I can't believe you confidently sat there like the Suns are gonna win. Don't worry, the Mav or the T- Timberwolves suck. Yeah, cat fraud. Cat um, not Carl Anthony Towns. Um, Anthony Edwards can't carry the team on his own. The Suns will handily beat them. Yeah, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. And I'm gonna. Uh-huh. I want to take out all Nuggets analysis because I know people watching this right now are probably like the Timberwolves are rolling the Nuggets. I want to like I'm taking out the Nuggets series right now because I understand that they roll through the Nuggets. It, it looks better for the Suns. Every single one of those games in that series looked the exact same because the Timberwolves simply wanted it more. The entire yeah. series, every single time they came out there. It looked like, I think I put it in our group chat, the Suns were like, guys, Timberwolves, stop. We're playing too hard. Like, There's a Devin Booker video of him at the open gym. Um, stop asking double why he's teaming. Getting, we don't, we don't do teaming. that here. We don't do that in open runs. That literally was reflected in this four-game series because they, they looked like they were like, the Timberwolves, you can't be trying this hard. It's the NBA. Like we don't yeah. play basketball that. Like, No, we don't play physical basketball, guys. We don't do that. And that's what they look like the entire series in every game. They come off out in game one and get their like 
bases kicked in. And I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense, right? The Suns dominated the regular season matchup. Um, they came in, took the Timberwolves a little bit lightly. They were on the road. They get their teeth kicked in. Fine. Surely, game Devin Booker's terrible. Surely, game two will be different, right? Um, and Grayson Allen gets injured this game, but Devin Booker. Oh, thank points. God. Bradley Grayson Beal. Allen really bringing them together. No, I'm just, I'm just bringing it up. But Devin Booker, 20. Bradley Beal, 14. Kevin, 18. They're your big three. You need one Rush, of them blow to that candle up. They don't deserve a memorial. They don't deserve no, they a don't. memorial. They don't. And then, yeah. so they, they lose game two. Not really that close. Anthony Edwards crapped all over their head. Game three. Okay, surely. Okay, me, this is me thinking, right? The series never really starts until you win, until you lose at, at home, right? Well, they lost at home by a lot in game <laughs> three. They lose, by, they lose by 17 points at home. Um. And the big three kind of play well. You know, Devin's got 23. I don't know the shooting percentages here. If Devin's got 23, Bradley 28, Kevin 25. Like, okay, they still get their teeth kicked in because good old Anthony Edwards had 36 for them. All right, now we flash forward. Okay, you're not going to win the series at this point, but can you just make it? Can you just redeem in game four? No, nope, gentleman sweep. Because simply Anthony Edwards wanted it more than you guys. He has 40 points in a closeout game. That Devin Booker has nearly 50 in, but Bradley Beal could only muster up nine points. And the moral of the story lighter flick right now, because Anthony Edwards smoked on the Suns pack that entire series. The moral of the story was Timberwolves scored 120 in game one, 105 and two was outlier, 126 and 122. They couldn't defend them. And why couldn't they defend them? Because they didn't want to be physical. And yeah. I said before I said before the series in my clip when I said that the Suns were gonna win in five, that I thought the Suns the question about the series would be how the Suns were going to match up with them defensively. And it didn't matter about the matchups because they actually just didn't want to play defense. And that's what it came down to. They didn't want to play against the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves are a ferocious defense. They, um, they're, they're extremely long. They fly around the court. They can test every single shot. They're physical. They'll get up in your grill, but the Suns didn't have answers for that. And like, honestly, it's disappointing for a team that prides itself on shot making and, all that type of stuff like that's super uncharacteristic. So I, the the sun should be embarrassed. And what's even more embarrassing is now there's all this talk about: Do you trade Kevin? Do you trade Beal? Where do you go from here? It's like you just put the band together, just put them together. Everyone was injured all year, and the fact that they're like it should have been ironclad from everyone. No, we're not panicking. We're not panicking. Instead, it's like time to panic. And it's like, what, like, what, like, I mean, I think the Suns should panic. Absolutely. But that's not what I want to hear from the owner who just put this team together. <laughs> that's not what I want to hear from the GM who just put, like, you can't put together Bradley, like, ever, kind of people told you it's a bad idea to get Bradley Beal, number one. That was a general consensus was that it might have not been a great idea to get him. Um, a lot of people at the time were questioning that decision, whatever. You go out and get him. You put the three out there, you trade eight and whatever. And it just doesn't work out well at all. And now I feel like the whole ownership is pressing the alarm button. And I'm just like, people could have said this lie. Wasn't... Oh, sorry. Continue no, I'm just saying, I'm, gonna go. I'm just saying it, there was question marks and concerns early on in the year. People, they thought they were smarter than everyone thought they could bring the big three and do all that type of stuff. And now they're suddenly like, ah, maybe we didn't do the right thing. It's like, I, if I, you're an ownership, I want you to stand on, stand on business and say, Listen, this was not a great series, but we're going to come back next year, make a little bit of tweaks around the roster, and we're going to show that Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant can compete with the best of them. I mean, it was not long ago that we were saying Devin Booker was a bona fide top 10 NBA player. Yeah. And now, what is he? 16, 17? He's a bum. He averaged 27 he points in the regular season. You wouldn't. He played like a bum, too. He was yeah. bad. His body language was bad. I'm a big Devin Booker guy. His body language was terrible the entire series. Didn't seem like he really wanted to play defense, crying offensively. It was bad. Well, look, uh, at the end of the day, I think that in this case, this is one of those examples where attitude reflects leadership. The organization didn't really have like, it didn't really seem like they had like a ton of vision. It was just like, all right, we're just going to bring some guys in and they'll figure it out. And there wasn't really a vision and not going to lie, they didn't really bring in any like tough guys like for the playoff runs don't get me wrong kevin durant is like a top probably top 10 player of all time 
when all said and done. But he's not, and he does absolutely have that killer mentality. But he needs to be on a team that also has those guys. Let's be very clear, because Devin Booker is not one of those guys. He's just Who, not. He's a great player. He doesn't have that same like dog mentality. He doesn't yeah. have it. Kevin Durant has two rings, and yeah. the physical, the the tone setter of those teams that he won rings on was not Kevin Durant. No, it, it was. You could argue it was Draymond Iguodala, Green. Draymond Green. It, like, you can argue. Yeah. I would say there's a strong. I would say the tone setters that team. Draymond at the top, Steph at two, like yeah. Iggy at three, and yeah. maybe Clay. Kevin Durant was set in no tone. Yeah, he was just like he would show up and just nail shots and like like utterly insane. Let's be very clear, that team was ridiculously good. But he like Kevin Durant as a player is not the kind of guy that's going to lead a team. He's going to be like basically a number one option, but you need another guy to like really set the tone for that team. Like if you put Kevin Durant with Anthony Edwards, they are going to be disgusting together. Because Anthony Edwards is going to do everything in his power to win that game, no matter what happens. And then he's going to be able to chuck it out to Kevin Durant, who's going to make some ridiculous play and be able to score. Like That's the kind of guy that he, that Kevin Durant needs to be surrounded with. And a guy like Devin Booker and Bradley Beal, those are not the kind of people to be surrounding him with. So it just kind of reflected the organization as a whole, and they just absolutely <laughs> bed. And then the second that things went wrong, up. Uh, we're not playing defense. We're panicking. It's all over. We can't win like this. So we need to blow it up. Like, I hate to say it makes sense, but it, it really does. The They're really hoping, in my opinion, that the Timberwolves, and they might do it, but they might go on to the, win the NBA finals. That's the best case scenario for the Suns so that you can say, well, guys, we just got bone they won rushed the by finals. the. We just got yeah. bone rushed by the 2024 NBA champions. Look, look, they just swept Denver. What did you it's want okay. us to do? Yeah, what do you and want? I, us I, for, and yeah. I would tend to agree with them, but that's like the best case scenario for them mm-hmm. because there's just no, like it's it was four two. Yeah, and I know people want to say the regular season doesn't matter. I do believe the regular season matters. This is a matchup the Suns dominated in the regular season, which shows me that they didn't more so that they didn't bring the energy to the playoffs. Like the Timberwolves yep. up their energy in their game preparation, and the Suns didn't because they could yep. have at least gotten two games. Absolutely, but they did not because they're a bunch of bums. Yeah, it was it's a, it's a, bad, it's a bad, bad look and bad it's a bad take on my end. It'll it's one of the worst of all time because I speaking of bad takes, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is not who, a good well, okay. For you, who bud. can I say? Can I say something first? Yes. The reason this is not as bad of a take. It's not only did I say the Lakers would win in seven, but the reason this is not a bad take is I still feel like a lot of what I said about the series came came true. It was just every single a- a- end game, just and like every time the Lakers needed to actually close the deal, they didn't, and that was predictable. Um, obviously, we're talking about the Nuggets beating the Lakers four to one. So, and did again, you have the Lakers in the finals? Well, okay, I will be clear. I still think the Lakers are the second best team in the West. Well, I mean, this this is getting complicated by the Timberwolves situation coming in there, but we're taking out this Timberwolves season. I still believe, like last year, the Lakers are the second best team in the West. They just ran into the first best team in the West. Um, and then the Nuggets own the Lakers. Listen, um, Lakers led 70% of the series. They led every single first quarter. Every time the first quarter ended, the Lakers were up. They led most half times. They're always up in the third quarter. They were up 20 in game two. They lost on a Jamal Murray game winner. They lose in game five on a Jamal Murray game winner. Um, every every game was super close. And that's where I feel, like I, I hand up, like I, I predicted the series wrong. But I don't feel as if I just watched the product and was like, man, I just missed the boat. I'm like, oh, a few things swing the right way. The Lakers are going into a game seven with the Nuggets. Whereas the Sun series, I'm just like, yeah, I just they're just completely wrong. Um, it's a valid take. You're still I, very wrong. Oh, I'm still very, yeah, still but, very wrong. I mean, I I said the yes. Lakers were going to win the series and go on the, the next <laughs> yeah. round, and um, and that didn't happen. But yeah, I do like for anybody <laughs> no, watching I, this. 
If you yeah. want to see, it's funny. Like if last year we said that the margin of victory for the Nuggets was six games. I mean, six points yeah. over four games. And if you want to see something that was just as close, you could watch the Nuggets beat the Lakers in 2024 in a five game series. That was just that consisted of two Jamal Murray game winners. One that was an actual yeah. like time expiring game winner game winner. What um, was a dagger to like put them away? Like yeah, it, just, it was it's it. Uh, no, 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 I 100 percent like I totally understand where you're coming from, because like the someone like the Denver Nuggets play like such bad basketball for three and a half quarters against the Lakers. And then those, that last like six minutes of basketball is the best basketball you've ever seen in your life solely against the Lakers. They will do it against no other team, but they will make sure that the, you will watch the dumbest crap you have ever seen go into that basket, whether you like it or not. Cause like, the Jamal Murray fade away jumper over Anthony Davis to win the game. Are you like, are you kidding me? That shot does not go in nine times out of 10, but that was the one time and it's going to go in every single time because it's Denver against the Lakers and they just will refuse to lose to them. It's so funny. The the Lakers can never stop the nuggets in the fourth quarter. Like defensively, like, I just don't know what it is about the Nuggets. They just get to their spots. And I think taking some lessons from the Timberwolves series, it's the Lakers just aren't physical enough um, with them. They don't have the athlete. They don't have the athletes necessary, the length to disturb Jamal Murray. And every single fourth quarter looked the exact same. Jamal would dribble it up the court. They'd run a pick and roll. Um, They might dump it off the Jokic. They might have Jamal take it. Um, They have a bunch of role players. Michael Porter Jr. Very good. And, um, they have the Lakers don't have the athletes for it, and they'll have to answer a lot of questions. Like we said earlier, Darvin Ham gets fired. Um, there's obviously roster concerns there. I personally think the the Lakers' biggest problem, and I love LeBron, and LeBron had a good series, is that they can't keep paying LeBron like he's a top five guy in the league. Yeah, because I think he can play at top five level sometimes, but he can't play. He's like not all the offered. Time. Yeah. Like if you watch like if you watch a guy like Anthony Edwards play right now, he is going out there and we, and we barely talked about Anthony Edwards for the Sun series is how much stuff we have to talk about on the podcast. But <laughs> when you watch him, he's playing 40 minutes of intense basketball on both sides of the court, high usage rate. LeBron doesn't have that. I mean, Anthony Edwards is playing 40 minutes a game at altitude. LeBron James is second wind at altitude. And that's okay. Yeah. He's 39 years old. I don't blame him. He's still a great basketball player, still the GOAT. But we can't keep taking up 60 60 is excessive 50 million dollars of the cap space on lebron james because you can't pay him like he's your one anthony ed not anthony or anthony davis is not good enough to be your two and they just don't have the athletes on the team necessary so mm-hmm. i don't know i would love for him to come to philadelphia and that's just not as a sixers fan uh, i think it's a good fit there but lebron I think stay in Los and Giannis are coming to new york I have to be honest, like I, I think there's a zero percent chance LeBron is not not on the Lakers. I think he will be a Laker next year. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it'll be him, Anthony, and some other guys. He goes wherever for... Bronny gets drafted. Let's be real. No, 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 well, no. Because then he's Bronny's gonna they're gonna drafted. pull. Well, right. either a he won't get drafted. B they're just gonna pull like an Eli Manning and then just refuse to go somewhere. And then some other team is gonna like draft him that he actually wants to go there. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I, it's it's just funny like seeing this whole Lakers Nuggets series play out because it just looked the exact same as last year, except the, the this... nu- except the Lakers got a little bit better. Well, like the game, not, the games were a little bit closer, and the Lakers. Yeah, won a game. I guess yeah, because like the Lakers won a game. Yeah, it it was just like uh, it, it was it was very similar to like that Mavs thing where it was like the Nuggets were inevitable. Like at yeah. no point did I really feel like the Lakers were going to win that series after watching the Jamal Murray like buzzer beater i'm like nope they lost this is the series it's over once game two happened like i i think i knew the lakers lost the series when they were up 20 and i watched oh yeah 10 because i not even the game didn't even need to end and i said when the lakers when i felt i felt when the lakers were up 20 in game two that they were going to lose the game and at that point i knew the Lakers had lost the series and they, cause they did, yep. they, they, the 20 point lead evaporated out of thin air and 
the Nuggets won and hit a game winner. Um, and that's just because they made the plays down the stretch. They don't get rattled, yeah. and the Lakers do. They don't have the talent. They don't have the uh, shot making. So hats off to the Nuggets. Um, I think that's like a challenging first round matchup for it. I think they're paying for it now against the Timberwolves. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's another awful take by me. Lovely. Yeah. We'll keep pointing them out. We're going to well, speed. Th- Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was about to say here was a decent take by everybody that oh. the Celtics were going to win. Who would have thought? Chances. Oh, yeah. Who would have thought? Um, yeah, we're going to breeze through this. Um, what everyone expected, of course, the Heat get one game that they hit drill 23 threes. Ridiculous. Um, big problem from this. Kristaps Por- Porzingis goes down with that like dreaded calf injury that you think is Achilles. And, oh, if he plays on it, I is he going to get an Achilles? I don't think it is. But it's but it, still the, like he might be out for the rest of the playoffs, I think. He's out for the entire next series, could come back in the, for the finals. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. next series. Uh, but we'll see going forward. I don't I don't anticipate there being much of a problem with the Cavs without him. So um, I'm not too concerned. But again, when as expected, this wouldn't be a podcast episode if I didn't want to talk about the Heat. So I'm going to talk about the Heat. <laughs> oh, my God. Here we um, go. And I think there's been some reporting on this. The Heat have to stop this whole thing. Every year since the bubble, they watched Jimmy, playoff Jimmy, come in for the bubble and dominate. They said, wait, guys, let's recapture that. If we hit lightning in a bottle again, we can make the finals or maybe win the finals. 2021, lightning in a bottle doesn't happen. 2022, lightning in a bottle doesn't happen. 2023, you get back to the finals. Nuggets beat you. You lose. 2023, 2024 comes around. You try to hit lightning in a bottle. One player gets injured, which again, he's your star player, but you have nothing after that point. And honestly, you were limping into the playoffs anyway as the mm-hmm. eighth seed after the Sixers took you out in the play-in game. So at this point going forward, I understand heat culture. I understand people who like it. I'm not trying to just knock. I don't like the heat, but you cannot come back next season and say, okay, guys, the exact Jimmy Butler, thing, yeah. Bam out of bio. They're going to get us there because they're not like it's every single year. And you're just like, you just keep hoping that things will eventually break your way. It's not going to happen. It's the East was, happen. Yeah. I know you ran into the Celtics. The East was bad this year. Bad, bad, bad all year. And you were he- relatively healthy besides Jimmy, who's always injured. Besides that, you were a relatively healthy team and you still could still were the eight seed. Joel Embiid yeah. is going to win his second MVP this year. Goes down for 30 games. They still make the playoffs as a higher seed than you. And I would, I would say it's not a big deal, except for the fact that it completely affected number one, Jimmy, who got injured at the end of the year, probably because he was working his ass off at the end of the year when he didn't, you didn't want him to. And number two, it affected your playoff matchup and how far you could get in the playoffs. If they're the seven seed, we're thinking a lot differently if they're playing the Knicks, the series with a healthy Jimmy Butler. And if they're the three seed, God forbid, they're playing the Pacers, which I think everyone would have taken the heat over the Pacers. So just a time the time for the heat to need to like move on yeah they kind of got to nuke their their team as well at this point and there's they got to figure it out there's some reports that jimmy wants out of miami um i would i can't say that on the podcast but i would be very upset and do bad things if the sixers went <laughs> after jimmy butler um oh oh i see what you're saying yeah now. jimmy but, returns to the sixers and loses I'd, yet again I hate that so much for the Sixers. Um, but <laughs> watch, it's gonna happen, dude. It's gonna it's happen. For, right? I can't wait till this clip is gonna be posted on our Instagram that you should all go follow. And when that great, happens, great plug. Fifty minutes into the podcast, I'm sure everyone's still listening. I know, right? And then they, and then Justin just loses his absolute mind. I can't wait for it. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, and this is another one of the like, I the first round was really good. Uh, in my opinion, despite some of the blowouts, but one a great series is Cavs Magic that just no one cared about. It was oh yeah, it, it ended up it turned out to be a decent series that nobody yeah. watched. But, but here's the weird thing: Game One, Cavs are at home. And I actually, I just want to. I'm going to just pull up the series. Uh, yeah, just pull it up because I just want to d- detail how bad some of these blowouts were uh, because it's truly crazy. Okay. Uh, where are we going at? Where are we going here? 
I mean, that's what okay. happens when you put just an entire series on, like, what was it, on NBA TV or something so that, like, nobody yep. could watch it. Mm-hmm. All righty. Game, game one, the Cavs win by 14. I promise you it was worse than that. It I, felt I was a watching lot worse, it. yeah. It was, yeah. Second game, they lose by 38. Oh, yeah, sorry. That, no, no, sorry. That was, that was game three. Game two, the Cavs win by 10. Okay. But, again, it was worse than that. I got close at the end. Game three, going back to Orlando, they're down 2 0. They beat the Cavs by 38 points at home. Game four, they win by 23. Game five, now it's four straight blowouts. Not a close game in sight. Game five, Cleveland ekes out 104 103. Palo has 40 points. Evan Mobley has a game winning block on Franz Wagner, who went for the game winning layup. What a game! Game six, Orlando fighting for their lives back in Orlando is a 107-96 game. Donovan Mitchell has 50 points in a loss. And loses, yeah. And you're like, oh my, you're like, this is a series. Now, they always say that the series doesn't start until the home team loses. Well, I guess the series never started because you go to game seven in Cleveland. It's a close game throughout. The, the, the Orlando Magic are beating the brakes off of Cleveland in the second quarter. Like, it's over, essentially, at that point. You're just like, it's done. Cavs come roaring all the way back on Donovan Mitchell's 40-point performance. They win by 12 at home. It is Amazing. four blowouts sandwiched by two all-time <laughs> classic yes. games. And then a game at the end where the Magic were up by 20-some points, and <laughs> Cleveland comes all the way back to win by a comfortable margin. Like, just the weirdest, the weirdest series I've seen in a long time. I said before I thought the Cavs would win completely on like having the advantage expertise. Obviously, Jerry Allen has some games. I think that did affect things with his bruised rib. Mm-hmm. But still, like... Crazy. I'm glad the series turned out to be fun because I think it made some more basketball viewing pleasure. Paolo Boncaro got a lot more time on the screen and a lot of people got to mm-hmm. see him. And I think that's awesome when you get to more young players. Absolutely. Um, I think we talked about it the episode. People don't talk about it. Paolo Boncaro is really good. He's been He's good really since he entered the league. Yeah. Uh, we're obviously in a league that doesn't really care about the draft as much anymore. And I understand why. But uh, like... Since we don't care about the draft, I don't think people realize that Palo is the number one overall pick and has been playing really well as a number yeah. one overall pick. Um, I'm trying to figure out how much that Magic game, how much exactly they were up because they were up by a lot at that at that one point. But anyway, that was the Cavs Magic series. Um, any takeaways? I I didn't watch. A I single didn't second watch of it. it. I have no it, idea what happened. Fair enough. Which. <laughs> Like I feel like that's like the best kind of description for this series is one guy retelling it to everybody else saying, you guys don't understand how good this series was. And everyone's like, oh, I didn't even know they were playing. That's kind of exactly what happened. Just a weird, this weird series. Um, anyway, another weird series is the Pacers beat the Bucks because Giannis doesn't play the entire series. Dame misses a lot of the series. Um, I don't want to talk much about the series. Um, Ty- Tyrese Halliburton wasn't yeah. good. Um, a lot of stuff. Here's what things I wanted to talk about. Number one, game five debacle. Pacers up 3 1. No Dame, no Giannis. Bucks how win. Do they, that's, how do they win? How? That's an how that's that absolute, Bobby Fortis, man. That's absolute malpractice. And even for a team that has to go up against the Knicks the next round, like the one day extra, two days extra of rest would have been huge. Instead, you have to go back yeah. um, home and play the Bucks again because you couldn't handle the team. That's the first yeah. thing I want to mention. That's just an, that's an it's an all time playoff embarrassment because you just oh, yeah. completely cleared the talent gap there. Number two, Doc Rivers. I'm pissed off because I know he's going to get a pass for this. He gets a pass for everything in his damn life, everything that he's ever done in the league, and he's going to be like, guys, what was I, didn't I have supposed Dame. to do? I didn't have Giannis. I didn't have Dame. We were terrible. There's nothing I could have done. Here, here's his exit interview. Ready? Someone give me, give me a question. Hey, Doc Rivers, uh, um, Justin Curtis coming reporting from ESPN. I just wanted to say, like, how would you evaluate the job you did this season? I mean, obviously, you didn't get to where you wanted to go, but how do you evaluate the job you did? Yeah, great, great, great question, Justin. Um, obviously, like, I took over a team in the middle of the year, which is really hard to do. Um, and, you know, it was a little bit rocky, but, you know, we were able to be the third seed in the playoffs, and I think that's really good. 
And then when we got into the playoffs, my number one star player, MVP, top 10 player, when it's all said and done all the time, you know, he unfortunately hurt his calf going into the playoffs. So at that point, we really stood no chance and everyone in the media counted us up. And just when I thought things were going good and we won game one, Dame hurt himself. So I mean, I'm be honest, Justin, I don't really know what you expected from me or this team, but you know, I was proud of the boys. That's exactly what he's going to say. Probably what he's already said. Everyone's going to be like, Doc, you know what? You're right. What were you supposed to do? And I don't know. Get out of the league. Go sit on a bench somewhere <laughs> and like call games. Like it's ridiculous. Like obviously, Doc Rivers couldn't have won this series, but they the Milwaukee Bucks weren't exactly coming into the playoffs as world beaters. Yeah, they like lit, again. They finished like they finished three points, three games better than the Sixers, who the MVP of the league was out for thirty games. Like they weren't going good. They're just ugh. yeah. The fact that the, the Knicks were able to jump them to the two seed was ridiculous. Like that B- never should have happened. Bananas. Never should have happened. It matters so. Uh, it just that stuff matters so much, and I, I just hope they don't it, rehire. It, it really does. And like, uh, look, I love my Knicks, but they were using the power of friendship the entire time. There's no reason why one of the best shooters of our generation and Damian Lillard, like, probably would be the best shooter if Steph Curry didn't exist. And then one of the the best players we've ever seen on a basketball court in Giannis, like during they were healthy during the regular season, and then they fell from the two seed to the three seed to and, the Villanova Knicks. And I know this is playing like revisionist history, going back, changing points, thinking things will change, but. Giannis hurt himself at the end of the season again because he was playing really hard at the end of the season because they because were down games. Now, I'm not saying it's Doc Rivers' fault that Giannis hurt his calf, but it's reasonable to say that if he did a better job coaching the team earlier in the year and they didn't have to play every game like it was their last, Giannis might have been able to relax a little bit at the end of the year. He wouldn't have hurt himself, and then it would have been a healthy Bucks team against a Sixers team who was clearly depleted because of their star player, and we're gonna about, about to talk about that series. And they could have probably beaten the Sixers, and instead it would be the Knicks in the Pacers playing in the first round, which I still think the Knicks would have won, but in a different series, and the Bucks potentially would get to see the Knicks in round two, which versus, they would destroy the Knicks. Like it, with, with a healthy, they're healthy Giannis and Dame, they would win. Period. But they because the Bucks had to play every game like it was their last because they didn't have yep. they didn't create any margin for error. So exactly. um, thoughts on the? I don't know if you guys watch the series much, but any thoughts on the Pacers? Uh, they looked shaky too. Yeah, like yeah. they weren't playing as well as they should have been to win this series. They're very hot and cold. Like when they're on, mm-hmm. they look unstoppable. When they're off, a JV team can beat them. It's yep. very weird. I've it's just strange to watch. Yeah, it's very concerning because again, that like I don't want to look in too much to that. Um, the game five they lost, but. You can't have those stinkers against um, more seasoned playoff teams. You can't do that against the um, team they're playing up next. You can't do that. You can't have that yeah. type of um, that performance. So Tyrese Halliburton does not look the same as when he did um, earlier in the year. I think that's a really mm-hmm. big problem because like, you're, you're going to need him. Um, yeah, and Siakam, I thought looked like that guy, and that's awesome. But if Siakam's your number one option, I don't really love your chances. So, um, <laughs> yep, that's that's what I got there to say go. about that. Um, All right, Siakam now that to series the big series. Twenty-two. I mean, Tyrese Halliburton averaged sixteen points. Like that's just got to be better on forty percent right. shooting. Anyway, okay, um, let's do it. Let's, Let's do it. Big one. Big bong. You, big bong. You get, say, you get to say this, Peter. You get to say it. I'll give you it. Okay. So. <sighs> Lovely. Here it is. Here we are. Didn't think we were going to be here at the beginning. We all predicted that the Sixers were going to win at the beginning. But as it turns out, the power of friendship and the Villanova Knicks and possibly some help from the refs uh, definitely got <laughs> the Knicks through in six games uh, to beat the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, 
it was a great series. Let me be clear. This was absolutely the best series out of the first round. This was clearly like the, I would probably say like third and fourth best teams probably in the East, maybe even second and third best teams in the East, just beating the crap out of each other for six games. It was so entertaining to watch because I feel like, what happened like early on it was like Jalen Brunson wasn't playing well and then the role players stepped up but just as Justin said at one point that the role players would step up a lot on uh when you're at home but then on the road you're going to need your star players to step up and that's exactly what happened so great call there Justin obviously with your amazing analysis as per usual um but great predictions was, great analysis what more can I yeah, do yeah 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 definitely um it was it was just such a good series like i and i am very glad that joel Embiid, as banged up as he was did play every game because that would have felt kind of like weird if he didn't if like oh well the next one okay well without joel Embiid, like literally the entire part of their offense um it was it was just awesome tyrese maxi is so good at basketball he's so good like he i i can't speak highly enough about tyrese maxi um but of course i'll also talk about my knicks a little bit um my boys obviously my glorious pookie bear my greatest player of all time jalen brunson uh he has brought life back into the city of new york basketball uh you have josh hart who is the professional glue guy who can just hit shots and remembered how to shoot threes this series and uh dante DiVincenzo, uh the man that ended racism in his maryland or delaware town i forget <laughs> where he was um the, these three are just so good and they got two big men up front they were playing that were hammering the offensive rebounds like they were like just obliterating the Sixers on offensive rebounds. I can't stress. I've never seen a team do stuff like this before. Justin, I don't know how you feel about that. I'm sure you're going to get into it eventually. But when it came to offensive rebounds, it was night and day compared like the Sixers versus the Knicks. It was, I mean, it was literally just pure heart. Two teams was just all heart playing against each other. The fan bases were so toxic. I absolutely loved it. The Knicks got bailed at one point. Then the Sixers also got bailed at one point by the refs. Obviously, the refs are going to be terrible no matter what. But, of course, as we always say, if you're complaining about the refs, like, like swinging a game, you shouldn't have put yourself in that situation. So, you know, bing bong, happy the Knicks won. Sixers fans, what are our thoughts? You know, as banged up as our team was all season, I mean – Proud of our guys for pushing it that far. Um, I'm glad Tobias is gone. Very glad. Um, let's see. I mean, I was a little confused with some of Nick Nurse's decisions. I mean, I know Buddy Heald wasn't playing as well the earlier games, but he never really let him like start to get going ever until like our, our last game. So maybe, you know, Buddy Heald's a great shooter. Maybe give him more minutes over Tobias. Um, and then... Paul Reed should never see a basketball court. That was really bad. I don't know why he spoke up and said anything. As soon as he said something, I'm like, this man's going to cost us the series. Oh, yeah. And um, honestly, like, yeah, it did suck losing, but like, the, the, we're as banged up. Embiid was playing with half a face and half a knee. I feel like this series was nowhere near as bad as like last year in Boston, where like, mm-hmm. yes, I feel like this team, I feel like this Sixer team overall was better than last year but like the way that these games were played it was clear that they still like they there was never a time where i like doubted the sixers were out of a game like they they yeah, fought yeah. hard through the entire series and like look it just, like some things just didn't go their way the knicks hit some stupid shots like it just happens yeah i think i think to tell to tell to analyze and to tell the outcome of the series for the Sixers is to tell the entire story of the season. So we started the season with James Harden on the roster. Um, yeah, true. And you get rid of him for role players. You kind of like, okay, you're gonna go with this Maxi and beat. A lot of people thought the Sixers are gonna make really big trade deadline moves to get into third, so they end up rolling with their guys. Okay, Joel Embiid's on track. He's putting up. I like. I don't. I hope people don't forget the stupid stuff that Joel Embiid was doing oh, early yeah. in the season. He was 
ridiculous. He was running away. This was Carson Wentz in 2017, 2018, yeah. um, going to win the MVP award until Carson tore his ACL until Embiid um, ripped his M. Well, he didn't rip his MCL, but he tore one of his meniscus in his knee. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he's out for 30 games. He comes back a little bit before the playoffs. The Sixers are on a huge run again. And then in game one, when the Sixers are winning, and Bede throws a ball off the backboard and hyperextends his left knee. And right at that moment, I said, they were done. We were already coming into the season having a starting lineup of Tyrese, Lowry, Oubre, and Bede Harris, who hadn't played many minutes together. Sixers also had injuries. Robert Covington, important rate player, and Anthony Melton, who is the starting shooting guard next to Tyrese Maxey, were out this year. I'm not saying injuries are why we lost the series, but we are having our starting shooting guard, a guy who would have totally guarded Jalen Brunson, is like six six, has long arms, would have def- defended Jalen well, but whatever. Um, but they come into the season, like they come into the playoffs, not well battle tested with that lineup, and Bede's not in shape. He hurts his knee in one game one. In game one. When the Sixers lost by 10, that was like one, seven points was the final score. Joel Embiid, who everyone shit on him pretty much for having a terrible game, who had he had 30, he shot 36% from the field and, and he had 29 points. Wasn't a great game. He was plus 14 on the court. Nicholas yeah. Batum, who played 25 minutes with a minus 20 on the court. Paul Reed, who played 11 minutes with a minus 21 on the court. Buddy Heald, with a minus 16 on the court. When you have routinely those type of performances from the bench, you're going to lose the game. Josh Hart has the game of his life in game one. The Sixers lose. In game two, you're still not playing that well. You're getting out hustled all over the place, but it's not as bad as game one. Game one was a complete, the Sixers were offensive. Like it was like, we are lucky it was that close. It was really, yeah. it was really, really rough. In game two, Joel Embiid, who's still not great, he has, shoots 41% from the field. He has 34 points. He's a, He doesn't go well from the free throw line. He's plus three on the court. And this is not as dramatic, but even if you go to the bench, Paul Reed, who played eight minutes, was a minus six. Buddy Heald, who you played a, wait, 14. Wait, how are you a minus six when you've only played for eight minutes? It's like you get on the court and they immediately yes. just start scoring. Yes. Buddy Heald plays for 14 minutes, minus three. Batum plays for 32 minutes, minus six. The Sixers lose in a game that the refs blew. And we talked about that on the podcast, I believe, last time. Did we? Yeah. Well, that was on yeah, the, we did. the Forgotten we did. episode. Oh, yeah. So that will eventually be posted. But general take is that the Sixers put the, ball, put the game in the refs' hands because they didn't execute well mm-hmm. in the game. Joel Embiid doesn't have a great game, but then through this game, Embiid gets in Bell's policy. And this is where I want to stop analyzing the stats and analyze this. You can say whatever you want about Joel Embiid not playing well in the playoffs. Please add the caveat that he's always injured. Because you can say as a whole, Embiid is not, tr- cannot be a number one option because he's only always injured in the playoffs. Cool. I'm done. I'm, I'm here for that. To completely subscribe to that. I'm very concerned about the Sixers' chances of ever making the NBA Finals with Joel Embiid simply because I've never seen him be injured and uh, healthy an entire playoff run except for the year they lost to Boston in the first round of the bubble and Ben Simmons broke his back and that he had three months off before that. So that's the only time he's ever been healthy for a playoff series. Um, even game even game two of the Toronto Raptors series when Kawhi hit the Stewart front rim shot, he was he came out with a flu in game two. I mean, like you can't make this stuff up. Mm-hmm. At that point in the series, Embiid is playing. He's got Bell's palsy. He's having migraines. His knee hurts because he's hyperextended. Yeah, like he's it. on every drug on the planet. Where like he just like they have all sorts of painkillers pumped yep. into him. And then what did Joel Embiid do in Game Three? He like had one. Uh, yep, he had fifty yeah. points. He had fifty points on sixty-eight percent shooting. Oh, tw- shot twenty-one free throws. Played forty minutes. In a must-win game three, that's disgusting. and that was that, w- that was the biggest blowout of the entire series. Yeah. Game four, just it's a you're this is for the Sixers to tie things up. This is where the Knicks have the big advantage, and Jalen Brunson gets things going. He has forty-seven points 
on fifty yeah. percent shooting, and that's what did the Sixers in. Because at that point forward, they're playing catch up. I want I want to credit the S- Knicks role players. They played out of their minds. Um, we'll see how the Pacers yeah. series goes. I don't think the Pacers are that big of a threat. Um, they had a lot of luck from those role players. I do not know if Josh Hart will ever play that good again. But also, the Sixers allowed them to do that. So True. I'll give credit to the Knicks. Um, but that was. One of the most fun first round series. Again, this is just another thing. Game one, seven point uh, Nick victory felt closer. Game in some free throws. Game two, Knicks win by three. It was even closer than that, which is shocking to say. It was closer yeah. than three points. Yeah, um, it was. Philly wins by 11 in game three. Okay. Okay. Knicks win by game by five in game four. Sixers win by six in game five. And then game six in Philly, New York wins by three. Like it's yeah. the, these tiny margins. It was an electric series. It gave me heart pain and everything between. I'm excited for the off would, season and excited yeah. to see where the Sixers go from here. I would also like to clarify that um, the which which game was going on during actual graduation was that game four? That was that game, was four. Was it? Yeah. Or yeah, was that, that was the game four? Yeah. Yeah. It was game four. It was game four. Yeah. 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 It was game four. Yeah. I remember watching that and it was just back and forth. Yeah. It was for, just for the, the audience, entire for the, time. For, for the audience, graduation started at one. The game started at one. So it was like while we're listening to thousands of people get their names read, just on the phone, looking at ESPN, <laughs> trying to get the updates for what's going on with the game. It was insane. I. Side note, I'm also so happy that uh, Knicks fans are now back to being insane. They are so funny. Um, I mean, I'm very... I'm, I it, it does suck for... Don't get me wrong. It does absolutely suck for, for Sixers fans. But I do see that there's going to be something. Because you still have Tyrese Maxey, who's incredible. Embiid... Oh, I, I have another narrative can, coming out of this game. Oh, you know what? Just go. Just go. Okay. I want you to hold on to that thought. I want the NBA media to stop anointing players as the new face of the league and like budding superstar yeah. before it actually happens. Like I, it bothered. I listened because I've been home. I've had a little, like little to do. So I'm sitting here watching these sports shows and everybody after game after Tyrese, Hex is like ridiculous. Like people have forgotten all this Tyrese Maxi literally team on his back. gets this team to overtime in game five. Um, oh, yeah. Pretty much saves the season, gives us another shot. Great news because we had another banger in Game Six um, that ended in heartbreak. But everyone, Tyree Max had a great game. Everyone was quick to anoint him. Like I heard literal people saying, "Having the face, we love to have the face of the league conversation." Yeah. Um, that's ESPN's favorite thing to do. Face of the league conversation. I heard someone say, "Hey, maybe Tyrese Maxey." Everyone just adopts his popular mindset that Tyrese Maxey is really good. Tyrese Maxey is really good. But then for a player, like I don't I, I hate being the guy to say this. They started overestimating how good Tyrese Maxey was. And yep. in game six, he, what he did was he had count and a must win game. He had 17 points on 33% shooting, one of six from three. Minus minus four on the court. I'm not trying to like blame Tyrese Maxey for the loss at all. But this like I hate when the media does this where it's just like we just take guys because they had a good game on national television and it's the New York media and say that guy might be the next day to leave. I agree. I think Tyrese and Joel Ty- Tyrese is a kid. He's practically our age. Um, yeah. I think he's 23. So um, he's got plenty of room to go. I think him and Embiid next year are the one, two for sure. But I had people, people out there pretty much like convinced Tyrese Max was a top 10 player in the league. It's like the way what are we talking, talking about? I'm about. like, yeah, slow, slow your roll. Jalen Brunson clearly is a better basketball player than Tyrese Maxey, and that was not what the conversation was like, heading out of Game Five. But I'm like tired of people annoying. People anointed Ed- Anthony Edwards last year um, because they were like, oh, this is Michael Jordan's kid and everything like that. Now, now it's fine to annoy him, but he wasn't yeah. that guy last year. Um, yeah, people always try to jump the gun, and then they jump the gun and anoint somebody as the new face of the league. And then whenever they're not ready for that mantle yet, they then bag on them for not being the face of the league and drag them down only to them have them try to come back to actually get the mantle. But then it's like, oh, well, we know in the past we can't trust them. They they can't do it in the playoffs. Meanwhile, they're like 22, 23 years old. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And if they want to anoint them the face of the league, cool. Then, But then I want you to... And- 
on your ESPN show to talk about why the narrative keeps being that Joel Embiid can't win the playoffs, can't get out of the second round. When is Joel Embiid going to make a conference finals? It wasn't that Tyrese Maxey shit the bed in game six. <laughs> that wasn't the narrative. And yeah. I don't think it should be the narrative, but then don't say he's the face of the league and carry this team. Exactly. Exactly. So I just, that bothered me. Okay, Peter, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying that Sixers fans, it, yeah, I, this probably hurt, but you'd still have plenty of hope going forward. Um, obviously, Tobias Harris. Whole lot of cap space. Whole lot, whole of, cap lot of cap space. space. Tobias Harris is getting sent to the moon. You still have Joel Embiid. You still have Tyrese Maxey. You got Buddy Heald there. Like You got some good players. Yeah, he's free easily. Agent. Okay, well, I, I think you could keep him around for like a cheap kind of contract. Like, I think that there's still plenty that the Sixers can do going forward. God, I need to do like a maybe my passion project this break will be to like to rewatch all the games and do like a in game analysis of like each. Like, every time we talk about a player, I'm like, let's not forget Buddy Heald, who nearly carried the Sixers on his back in game six just to be outdone by Josh Hart hitting another game winning three to win the. Like, Every game was just absolute crack. It, that series was so good. Oh my god, it was so good. Buddy Heal, who barely played at all, had six threes. Yeah, he was plus could, he twelve on the miss. court. He couldn't miss. He physically could not miss if he tried. Uh, just what what a series! What a series! So, Congrats, New York. Um, like sports bomb. are better when you have these matchups. Oh, it's absolutely. awesome! Everyone talked about it, and it was just—it was just yeah. a great time. It's it's so it's so good for the league when New York teams are better, and especially then when those New York teams go up against like diehard fan bases, like in Philly. Yeah. Oh my God! It's so, it's so good for the league because everybody was talking about it. Yep, for sure. Raj, any concluding thoughts on the Sixers? I mean, great season, boys. Uh. I'm so, so, so happy that Tobias Harris is finally, finally, finally no longer going to be allowed in Philadelphia. <laughs> he's going to get shot. If he steps foot in city <laughs> territory, he's going to get shot. Everyone hates him in South Philly. No one wants him there. I don't think he has one fan on, like, any, any Sixers fan that hates him. I was, I, was patrol- I was patrolling Philly today, and there were, there were no uh, Tobias Harris jerseys around. So No, that's oh, a shocker. shocker. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Why would you spend your hard-earned money on a Tobias <laughs> Harris? <laughs> Hard day's work. Let me go drop one fifty on the new Tobias Harris City Connect jersey <laughs> on a jersey that they made for ten cents in a Vietnamese sweatshop. Yeah, let me do that real quick. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk. We've gone long. We're gonna talk about that's the first round of the playoffs. It was a good time. There were a lot yeah. of good series in there. Um, had fun. Second second round, we're going to briefly just cover some storylines. We're going to get a lot more into this next week. Um, the only series that have started is Knicks Pacers and Nuggets Wolves. Some games started today as well as we're recording. Knicks Pacers, what an awesome first game. I mean, for I think for a series where we talked about, uh, this isn't going to be as good as Knicks Sixers, which it would be hard to topple. Yeah, it's still a fantastic game one. Great game. Knicks got bailed at the end. Uh, by some bad calls by the refs, but then I actually, also like it was strange because like as much as I said like the refs c- c- bailed out the Knicks, there also was some bad calls going the other way like earlier yeah. in the game. It was just like it was just the refs were just terrible. But what else is new? Yeah, actually, I love the word bailed because like this is going to bring up the conversation of getting about whether it was a foul or not. It was a foul, but yeah, was I shocked exactly. in that moment that they called it? I was really shocked. How they called it um, the whole Kate was, Clark thing all over again. Yep. yep. And I'll do like the only thing I had to say about the whistle is I feel like New York gets every benefit of the doubt call right now. Whereas other teams aren't getting that. Like the same thing with the Sixers. Like I don't it's not necessarily, I necessarily think that the, all the fouls called again on the Knicks. Um, well, against other teams and the Knicks get the advantage are not fouls, but it's just like every time the whistle blows, I'm like, of course, New York got it. Um, yeah. But want to shout out Indiana's bench. Ridiculous. Yeah. 
TJ McConnell plus nine, Obi Toppin plus four, Ben Shepard plus thirteen, Isaiah Jackson plus five. Just never heard of any in. of these people before this, and they were T- just dropping nukes on us last night. <laughs> My guy TJ McConnell, game of his life, wasn't enough. Um, just Brunson man is on a tear, and that's yeah. if he's gonna, he's carrying the team right now. I know there's a lot of other performances again, forty three against there. Josh Hart twenty four, Dante Givenchen to twenty five. The power of friendship. Yeah, we talked. We talked about it. Big keynote. Mitchell Robinson gets injured in this game. He's out for the series. Um, that's really going to thin out their roster. Yeah. Um, that's brutal. And it honestly might cost them the series. I think it um, will. I don't. There's so little left in this team. Jo- Josh Hart is playing 48 minutes every single night. Um, he played every single minute of that last game. Now Isaiah Hartenstein is going to play all these minutes like at some point there's just not enough minutes these guys are going to get exhausted and yeah. i know people are saying hey that coach they they're young coach um runs them hard in practice i get it but you can't like josh hart and dante aren't 24 25 point per game players like they're eventually going to regress back to the mean yeah and and i would say oh, okay don't worry jalen brunson can carry them no because jalen's eventually going to regress back to the mean jalen's been carrying yeah. this team forever so then so. you're going to have to then look to even further into the, the, the depth of the bench and it's going to, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, and I don't like, and I don't like what I see. It's just a little thought experiment here. Um, do you like Alec Burks, uh, man by Dick D uh, he played, I think he played in Virginia, uh, Daquan Jeffries, shake Milton or Jericho Sims NBA dunk said, contest contestant. You could have said, any name there and i would have just been like yeah they're probably on the bench i've never seen them in my life but who exactly yeah like I, you're starting to run out of options and again like playing with this a little bit more like nitty-gritty but the hartenstein miles turner matchup is miles the perimeter guy unless isaiah is just gonna be running around with miles for 48 minutes exactly it's just it's it's brutal that's a huge loss for the knicks um a team that's kind of been a little bit ravaged by injury but I yeah. give them credit. They're still playing hard, and and Randall would have been really good in this series, but yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love to see New York win for basketball because mm-hmm. a Knicks Celtics series, even if the Knicks are depleted, would so be toxic. Just like, oh my god, would be so it's toxic, be so toxic. But I'm probably leaving. I was leaning towards Knicks in six. I'm probably leaning towards Indy in seven with the Mitchell Robinson injury. Yeah, that that sucked, but we'll see. We'll what see are your thoughts happens. on the series outcome? Uh, I think, uh, ooh, I think Pace, Knicks and six. Still, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Pacers and seven. I think that's what it's gonna end up happening. Yeah, I, I think the Knicks game one advantage will will get them far, but I'm I'm afraid they might lose both in Indy with the injuries. Yeah. Um. So we'll we'll see. Um. It'll be interesting nonetheless. Nuggets Wolves. All I have to say is wow. Yeah. There's not really that, even much to say at this point because like obviously like you you've said this or you've alluded to this earlier about how like game ones are usually very lopsided. They're usually not that lopsided. Mm-hmm. Where the defending champs who everybody thought were gonna repeat got pantsed by the wolves. Well, the, well so game one was relatively close. They only lost by seven. Oh sorry, game um, two then. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's game like, two. but that's still the same point. Still, is game one you usually say okay, they just came out well, you know, four zero sweep, and I know, I know it was five games for the Nuggets, but it was a close five games. Okay, Nuggets come out, they beat you. Anthony Edwards has forty three. Like okay, whatever. It's like all right, fine. He's not gonna have that every game. We're gonna bounce back. Nas Reed sixteen points on the bench. You're like fine. <laughs> Nuggets, we're gonna win. We'll go one one. We'll get the series back. Go, go to uh, Minnesota. We'll come back home 2-2. Two, two. Not a problem. We'll handle business. And then you got pants in game two at home. Yeah. And, that was bad. And again, I'm not trying to say that the Nuggets are not trying, but they're not trying as hard as the Timberwolves are trying. Mm-hmm. Every single, there's Everyone's talking about how good the Minnesota de- defense is. They are getting up on the Nuggets. They're physical. They're not, the Nuggets... the. Timberwolves last night. Rudy Gobert left to go ha- like to go support the birth of the birth his wife and the birth of his child. They didn't even he wasn't play even with the de- there. <laughs> yeah, he won Defensive yeah. Player of the Year today. He, the Defensive Player of the Year wasn't even playing, and they got pants. The Nuggets. 
Yeah, that was destroyed. Crazy. And it was it wasn't an offensive dominance from the Timberwolves. They scored 106 points. Anthony Edwards was 27 points. Granted, it was efficient. Carl Anthony Towns 27. Granted, it was efficient. And just a bunch of okay performances down the board. But the Nuggets scored oh 80 points. They just locked them down. They couldn't do anything. Michael Porter Jr., 9 points on 30% shooting. Nikola Jokic, 16 points on 38% shooting. Jamal Murray, 8 points on 16% shooting. Ew. Aaron Gordon Yikes. led the team in scoring. Yeah. Oh, God, you got a problem. Aaron Gordon yep. was a minus 33 on the court. What the hell? <laughs> it's... What? The Nuggets are in serious trouble, and I don't want to, like, I ride with the Nuggets because I thought they've, like, they're, they've established themselves that, like, I don't like the bail of the Nuggets. They're, they're not winning the series. I don't think so either. But, no. There's a, I think there's a near 0% chance it doesn't go back to Denver at least 3-1, if it even gets back to Denver, and which I think it will, but, like, they're going to have to come back from 3-1 down. Because the Nuggets sure as hell aren't going to get two in mini. Yeah. And I'm not trying to just... Like, I don't want to just break it down. There's a lot of more schematic stuff we can talk about. Yeah. I just don't want to be like... It's we'll, because we'll they're trying... It down. Yeah. But just... Yeah. Where yeah, do you... It, predictions on that series? At this rate, I, I can see the Wolves, wolves sweeping. Sweep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll take I'll take the Wolves in six, I think. They'll get one in mini, the Nuggets. I think they'll win game five back at home. And then game six, it's going to be a bloodbath, and Minnesota is going to be electric. I I legitimately think they could just sweep. The, the yeah. Nuggets yeah. don't. I think though, because like you know, they came out, they played the Lakers, they were like, oh, it's fine, whatever. But these past two games in Denver were bad. Yeah, like, and Jamal were... Murray's getting fined. He's tossed an ice packs on the court. He really hit a ref with like a heating pad or something. Got fined a hundred thousand dollars. Like, yeah, they look rattled, and they're gonna they go, be going into Minnesota. That crowd has been like chomping at the bit for a good basketball team for a long time, for a really long time, and now they finally have a team, and they just know they're up two zero on the defending champs. With a clear line directly to the finals, nah, they're gonna be insane. Yeah, I hate to just join bandwagons, but I'm all in on the Nuggets right now. They're having the Nuggets fun team. The root for no uh, Timberwolves. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> really rapid fire. We're going long. Okay, per- series predictions. We predicted the last two. Final predictions: OKC Mavs. Uh, Thunder, Thunder in six. six. Damn it, Drosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going Mavs in seven. Um, don't feel great what about f- it. What? Oh, whatever. Um, sorry, just making sure I do all the playoff series right. Celtics Boston, and five. Yeah, Boston. Oh, there's only Cavs, four left. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Boston and five. Yeah, yeah. The the notable thing I guess for today is that the Celtics did beat the Cavs by twenty five t- <laughs> tonight. Can I switch um, just... that to Celtics and four? Actually, <laughs> now that they beat them by twenty five. <laughs> Um, I, I just wanted. I want only thing I want to point out with the Celtics before we go. Jason Tatum's been terrible, like actually bad. He's like he. Is, what else is new? Like oh god, like I don't know. I don't know. He's a bum. Get, He's another yeah. bum. Get him out. Get him out the league. Kobe doesn't want to talk to you. Anthony Edwards is the new <laughs> dog in town. <laughs> All right, boys. That's nearly an hour and forty minutes. Jesus on basketball. Christ. Damn. No time for anything else. The only other thing I want to say is shout out the Phillies, the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, what a, what a ride we're on right Bring now. Shout out to the Yan- you know what? I'll even shout out the Yankees too. Um, you know, Juan we'll- Soto, my beloved, give him a billion dollars, please. I wait for my pitch to do my job. I do my job. <laughs> I'm I'm very content if the Yankees for your sake and the Phillies end up in the in the World hey, Series. Uh, let's run it back. 2009. Let's do it again. <laughs> Different result, please, this time, though. Yeah. Well, we or, it will be. It will be. I put money on it, so it'll have to happen. Oh, God. Here we go. Uh, God damn it. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anything else? Big bomb. Out? <laughs> no, that's all. All right. 
Well, thanks, everyone. If you listened all the way through, thanks for listening to the Coconut Curry podcast. We're back from here on forward. Make sure you like all our content going forward. It'll help us out a lot. And other than that, we will see you next week on episode 32 where we break down more NBA playoffs. I'm sweating through my shirt right now. It's so hot in my room.